What up, what up, what up, you guys? It's Blackwing2040. Today, I'm going to be doing a review. This review it should have been done a long time ago, but I'm getting it done anyway. Today's review is going to be on Star Wars The Mandalorian. Now, a little backtrack with the show. Originally, I wasn't going to watch the show at all because me, when it comes to Star Wars, I'm very, you know, I prefer lightsaber duels. Anything that has a lightsaber battle in it, I'm, I'm set. I'm good. Like, I'm s straight up. I'm settled. But it's just, you know, when I found out, you know, the show was just about, you know, the Mandalorian, you know, pretty much the bounty hunter, you know, guild that, you know, Jango Fett and Boba Fett came from and every, I just didn't really, you know, I didn't really find that interesting. But, of course, one of my friends, Danny B. Wren, shout out to you, bro. We both, early in the year, watched the first episode. He tried to put me onto the show to, you know, give it a chance to try it out and everything. And watching the first episode, I'm like, okay, okay, the show is pretty interesting. It is interesting. And then, pandemic happened, and I was just, like, so desperate to just watch something new. So, I'm like, you know what? I'll watch The Mandalorian. And going through the entire first season, I'm just like, wow, this show has got to be like, this is one of the best Star Wars shows ever made. And it just really blew me out of the water. It's rare for things to, to just, you know, surprise me and just really just, you know, say like, oh my gosh, this is really cool. It's just, wow. And that's what The Mandalorian did. It surprised me. It just like, it's so great. And, of course, it goes back to that whole saying, you know, don't knock it until you try it. And I wasn't bashing the show or anything. I still thought, I mean, oh, cool, a, a live-action Star Wars show. That's that's nice. That's great for the Star Wars, you know, fandom. And then having, getting the chance to actually sit down and watch it, I'm just like, all right, this show is lit. <laughs> this show is very lit. So, pretty much... You know, The Mandalorian stars Pedro Pascal as the top titular character. And for, if you don't know who Pedro Pascal is, he's, you know, he's going to be in Wonder Woman 1984 portraying Maxwell Lord. He was also in um, The Equalizer Part 2. He was also in uh, Kingsman, The Golden Circle. And, of course, a fair share of other things. And I can say... I rec his voice is easily recognizable because just by seeing his work, I'm able to recognize his voice easily. And his portrayal as the Mandalorian was really, really good. Even though the thing is with the Mandalorian, when you become a Mandalorian, you can't take off your helmet. No one is allowed to see your face. No one can't see who you are or what you look like. And I'm going through the whole first season thinking like, am I ever gonna see him without his helmet off and then of course there were there was a moment where he did take off his helmet and i'm like huh and you know despite not seeing you know the facial expressions of anything of his you know his acting and anything in the character but throughout his actions and the tone of his voice within the performance of the mandalorian it was he, he did a really really good job it just really good job to him and also, you have other characters like Carl Weathers portraying Grief Carger, who is basically kind of like an ally slash adversary to the Mandalorian. And this is just season one I'm talking about, guys. I'm not talking about season two, of course. At the time of this recording, season two is still currently airing. So when season two ends, I will make a review on Mandalorian season two. But anyway, so Grief Carger's character. <laughs> I always considered his character like... Uh, I mean, I didn't really consider him as, like, a bad guy or anything. I just felt like, you know, the Mandalorian... I, I pretty much only cared about the Mandalorian himself because he had, you know, certain objectives that he wanted to get done, and he got them done throughout, the, you know, this first season. And, of course, the introduction, or I could say the highlight character of the show, fans would agree about this, is the child, a.k.a. Baby Yoda. <laughs> and... I remember when this character first came on the scene, the internet went crazy, like straight up crazy, like there were gifs made about Baby Yoda and everything, I'm just like, okay, what is the whole hype around this character, but turns out, this character, the child, can use the force and everything, so I'm like, hmm, probably, okay, he has some, you know, he has some backstory, he has some um to him after all, it's really cool. 
And another one of my favorite characters who was portrayed by G Gina Carano as Cara Dune. I love her character, by the way. Her character is really, really cool. And you don't really know much about her except that you know, she's she was part of the Rebel Alliance and then she kind of went on her own and everything. But I just love her character. And to go on to the other production side of the show and everything, this show has, you know, each episode is directed by a different person. For instance, Dave Filoni, who created Star Wars The Clone Wars, he directs an episode. Rick Famuyiwa directs an episode. Deborah Chow, Bryce Dallas Howard, um, Taika Waititi. There's a whole slew of people that directs an episode, and each style of storytelling is different. But it flows so well, and I love that. I guess you could, some of my favorite episodes, I could say, in the show. I have um, I have three actually. First one would be uh, episode uh, four, is where uh, the Mandalorian meets uh, Cara Dune. They travel to another planet seeking, you know, sanctuary and everything, and they teach a whole village how to defend themselves against an ATST. And I found out very, I found that really super dope. That was really, really dope as well. Uh, another one of my favorite episodes, episode five, The Gunslinger. And one of the reasons why this episode is one of my favorites is because you have Ming Na Wen, who is the voice of Mulan, and she's also Monica May. In, I mean, not Monica May, Agent. <laughs> she's in Agents of Shield. I'm sorry if I'm butchering her character's name, guys. I'm so sorry. But anyway, regard. I love her performance in that episode. It was it was cool to see her play like you know a dark character because I'm just so used to her. You know, I just know her as the voice of Mulan, and she does a really great job in you know the Gunslinger episode. And my third favorite episode has to be episode i would say episode six i believe yes yes episode six that episode is kind of like you know a suicide squad kind of uh episode and it's just it's just so good it's just really really good and the fact that you know john favreau who is the person you know the guy who directed the first two iron man movies the fact that he created such a groundbreaking show it's just straight up incredible the, you know, the scenery, the atmosphere, and just, you know, the journey of The Mandalorian is just darn awesome. And one, I could say, defining factor about this show is I find, you know, the wanderer or like, you know, the traveling protagonist aspect of the show to be very, very cool. I always find, you know, a character that's, you know, solo in their own thing or whoever, you know, has like, a companion to travel with i always find that aspect to be very cool i can say that's one of my favorite things about about the mandalorian and the fact is you know the fact that the genre of the show is a space western me someone who i don't really find westerns that interesting i'm liking this show i'm like this show is pretty it kind of is basically kind of like a western it's just you know in space and the mandalorian is just a great great show and everything I enjoyed the show. It really surprised me. Everything about it was just incredible. I don't know what else to say about the show. It's just the fact that they were able to take something that, you know, not really Jedi focused, but turn something, you know, that's very interesting, like a solo bounty hunter who was part of a, you know, a bounty hunter guild into something this incredible. It blows my mind. It really does blow, blow my mind. But anyway, guys. That's my review on The Mandalorian. In the comment section below, what did you like about The Mandalorian? Who was your favorite character? Who was your favorite, um, what was your favorite episode? What were your likes and dislikes of the show, if you have any? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell to be notified. And as always, I am Vengeance, I am Darkness, I am Blackwing. Stay golden, I have spoken.